Welcome to Maximo Joe's Cafe. Brought to you by Bonetti. This week in the cafe, we're going to have a good time. So, let's get into it. This week in the cafe, we're going to be talking about direct issues. What are those best practices in using direct issues in Maximo? Part of inventory management is the ability to predict the needs based off historical use data. From the storeroom side, this is done by using standard items from the inventory and tracking their usage, their purchasing history, their issuing history. That way you can basically determine the best settings for each items, reorder points to make sure you have enough stock in hand to meet those needs. You can look at your turnover rate of items to make sure that everything on the shelf is being used in uh, a timely manner so you don't have stock sitting on the shelves for 10 years which never get issued. You can manage where you want to set the stock levels for ordinary storage. Okay, Maximo provides a method to distinguish between regular inventory actions that would affect the items data versus items that are purchased for unique purposes, such as a major project, an expansion, something like that that's not under the day-to-day -day business. Direct issue items are normally started within the work order. So basically you're planning a project and you decide what materials you need. They could be non-standard items, they could be materials, they can be standard stock items. So we want to take, and if it's a project and you're trying to get it outside of those calculations for normal stock level, you would do a direct. Some of the impacts of, of the inventory data. If you don't separate your projects out, you tend to uh, go towards overstocking items. In other words, you're increasing the cost of storage. So if you have normally, let's say, a million dollars worth of stock in your storeroom and you're not separating those special uh, purpose type of purchases from the stock usage, well, then you're going to have more stock on hand because they're going to trend upwards every time you have a project and now your average usage over time will go up. So now you will see your numbers say, well, I need to increase my stock level or something like that. There is a cost associated with storage. If you if you have a st uh, warehouse that's a uh, hundred thousand square feet versus two hundred thousand square feet, there's heating costs, there's building maintenance, there it just cost cost of either renting or leasing the building. So there are costs associated with providing a place and the management of your storerooms. Another thing that happens is you lock up company funds in stock and not have that money available for other uses for the company. And we're going to also look at um, different strategies of getting that material to your work sites um, so you don't, you're not bringing them only into the storeroom. Okay, when we talk about the impact, hopefully this chart helps you understand the reasoning to use direct issue. I create a work order. Now, I'm on, I want to make a decision on are these parts going to be direct issue or are they going to be issued from the storeroom? Depending on the work order type, which normally governs it, you have your preventive maintenance, you have your corrective maintenance, okay? Those were normally come out of your stock levels because those are pretty much predictable in, in many cases, especially with preventive maintenance. But corrective maintenance, you have to have a certain amount of stock just in case something breaks so you can fix it. And so when you do that, you, you issue and order and everything through your storeroom and it becomes part of that storeroom's data. If it's a special project or an out of the ordinary purchase, uh, you may want to create a work order and do a direct issue on all those parts. In that case, it separates those purchases out 
from the calculations in your storeroom so you have a more realistic future use and planning for that and here we go to the actual purchasing process is very very similar there's only two things that are basically different as far as creating the PR the PO or reordering those direct issued items that have already been noted on the work order in inventory there's a different way of creating those purchases but the PO and the PR is the same process now you can have the ability to use drop sites in Maximo so that material can go directly to the job site or directly to a location associated with a um, a user. The other thing is when you receive it, it gets issued directly to the work order. It does not go into stock. These two charts are just to show you a basic example of how average stock issues affect the overall numbers. So in this first scenario, this is where we take and use direct issued items and stock issues. So we track that stock issue over the over the months and we do a three month average for those here but the overall average is for this item there's 31 units that go out that have to be ordered and and issued out from our storeroom for our regular maintenance and corrective actions that we do in the one below here where we do not separate out direct issue we buy everything through the storeroom and receive it in the storeroom and issue it out from the storeroom you'll notice that we have the same numbers as we do up above but your average is 12 more units per month if you're using basic calculations and figuring out how much do you have to have in stock to meet those needs now you're going to be storing 10 more of these items than you really need and that's going to inflate a couple things. You have to have room to store that extra stock and the cost of maintaining inventory controls goes up. And that's one thing we want to avoid. Now using direct issue items in Maximo, normally it's created through a work order. In inventory, you do reorders through a select action on the side, which says reorder direct issue and material. The PR and the PO process is exactly the same as any other purchasing. During the receiving process, instead of receiving it into the storeroom, you're receiving it to that work order. And now we're going to go ahead and go into Maximo. From Maximo, we're going to go to work order tracking. We're going to create a new work order. And this work order is for a project. We're going to take and select a work order type. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click on Other. And here I'm going to add a location. Once you've gotten all your information for your work order, then you can go ahead and save the work order. The next thing I'm going to do is take and plan my work. So I'm going to go under, under the Plans tab we go to materials we select new row I insert the item that I need put my quantity put the unit cost for this particular one now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go direct issue and under there I'm going to add a vendor I'm going to go ahead and save or set the date I want this required by the 17th okay. Now if I go ahead and save this work order and I change status and I'm going to pick that it's approved, click on OK. I'm going to know, note that my work order now is in status awaiting material because I have a direct issue item on it. So from here I'm going to go ahead and go to inventory. Under inventory I'm going to go reorder direct issue items. Under here I'm just going to extend this and I'm going to not run it in background. I want to preview. What this will do is bring up all direct issue items and services that are pending. As you can see here this pin quantity 30 is the one that I want to reorder or I want to order. So I'm going to 
remove all the other pendings for this demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and run the reorder. I can see here that n number of items reordered was one. I have the PR that was generated, so I can grab that PR, click on OK, go to purchasing, purchase requisitions, and I'm going to bring up the PR we just created. And in here you know it's a direct order item if I go to the PR lines, open up the details. As you can see, it is issue on receipt. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and approve this. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a PO. I'm going to auto number it. This PR was approved, create a PO, so it's closed. So now I go to purchasing, go to purchase orders, bring up the new PO that I just created. I can also check the PO line, make sure it's correct. In here you see that it's also issue on receipt. I have the work order number, the location. So now I'm going to take and go ahead and approve this. Now a certain amount of time goes by and I go to receiving. I look up the PO. I click on select ordered items. In here I can add the packing slip and any remarks, click on OK. And you can see the PO status is approved and it is complete inspection. Now if I take and go back to the original work order, here it is project, you see the status has changed to approved because the parts are here and if I go to actuals go to materials. The part was priced out and entered as an actual item on the work order. So it has been issued. Now we come to the end of this episode of Maximo Joe's Cafe. Remember, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please like, comment, and visit our webpage at Benetti.com. And feel free to uh, ask any questions if you need more uh, information in more detail about how you can use your Maximo better please do not hesitate to contact Bonetti thank you very much and have a great day